Hey Steelers Nation, in this episode I'm going to give my official season long breakdown for the entire season. All the great things I think are going to happen out of Steelers Nation with a healthy, healthy dose of reality. The first and foremost thing that is hard to make this projection with the Pittsburgh Steelers is the amount of growth that we have seen from Kenny Pickett in this preseason. And that is a tremendously great problem. In fact, we've been seeing in the national media coming up here for the last couple of weeks. People are finally realizing Kenny's put the ball in a good spot. This receiving core has a freak named George Pickens in it. And Friar Ruth is one of the best up and coming tight ends. This team could put up some points. And I completely agree with that. The fear and the elephant in the room is how are we going to be, particularly in the third quarter, when our offensive adjustments are on the field. So while I've seen Kenny prove that he has gotten better at putting the ball in the right spot and his accuracy is through the roof, will the schematics adjustments increase? Remember, we were the fourth worst offense in the third quarter in NFL history last year, which shows zero adjustments to being able to do what your offense is doing compared to the defense. That is my biggest fear and the glass ceiling of what I see with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I do believe that this defense is going to return to leading the league in sacks. And once you get that, you're going to have some amazing results behind them. So you're never going to be out of a game. And with that being said, I believe Kenny Pickett by himself, just by being in games, is going to continue to show the propensity of the Steelers way that we've had the entire Tomlin era. Really the Cower era too, which was just being in the game in the fourth quarter and because our quarterback's better than yours, we'll figure it out. And I have come to the conclusion, and I believe this is accurate as can be, that by the end of the season, everyone else will see it as well. Kenny Pickett is going to be either number one or number one B quarterback in the AFC North. And I don't think it's going to even be close when it's all said and done. And as a result, he's going to be considered one of the top eight quarterbacks in the NFL. And I really think that that's what we're going to end up seeing by the end of the season by Kenny Pickett. When we look at the team overall across its roster build, on offense, it has the ability to do so many different things, which is exactly what you want. When we play a defense that can only stop the run, we have the ability to go vertical. When we have a defense that is designed to be spread out and cover the quick passing game, we can run it up the middle with a very heavy and powerful blocking package. So with having Washington being your number two tight end, a very stable backfield that is diversified with Najee being able to do the power running up the middle and Warren be able to hit the quick hit speed things, the backfield is diversified. The receiving core, we have the super tall in George Pickens and Washington. We have the immensely powerful in Fryermuth in the middle of the field. And then we have the speedster of speedsters in Austin who can go over the top and then possibly the best receiver who can just sit in a space that's open, sometimes created for him, in Deontay Johnson. So when we look at the ability to move the ball, it should be dramatically different just from the increases and trust that it's given to this team. While last year Kenny did throw the ball 30 plus times a game, the Steelers overall did it less than 60% of the time, and they didn't let Kenny throw the ball downfield. In this preseason, those two biggest problems are reversed and off the table. So as long as the offense can continue to produce on the run of the mill, first downs and second and normals, this team will be in great shape. One of the fantastic things that we've seen historically under Tomlin and continue to see under this preseason is a lack of penalties. The pre-snap penalties got us last year, particularly with Dan Moore. But overall, this team has had very little in the preseason, virtually none compared to their opponents. And that net penalty gap, especially the net first downs from penalties, is a tremendous edge that the Steelers are going to have all year. We have essentially three players on offense that anytime we want to go to them, a flag can be created. No one can be with Washington and not, cover, not tackle this guy as he jumps up on a fade route. It's effectively an instant defensive holding or pass interference anytime we want. Pickens is the same way, and Austin's speed over the top can similarly make that same type of mismatch. We have the ability to have this game in and game out. And we look at the other side of the field. My biggest fear coming out of the draft was, George, was that Joey Porter Jr. was going to be a flag machine. 
And while we haven't seen him immensely in the preseason, what we have seen is the NFL tendencies that says that's probably not going to be a necessary concern. Because what makes people have immense flags is when they don't look back for the ball and make adjustments. And when we go to Porter's interception, it was a play that most cornerbacks completely missed because it was that badly throwing the ball. But the fact that Porter is having his eyes where the ball needs, where the ball is, will reduce the likelihood of him getting the pass interference penalties. And concluding this whole point about us winning the net penalty yardage, I think we're in a tremendous place to do that. And I think as a result of those major factors, winning the net penalty yardage, having much better sacks than before, and Kenny's ability to close out the fourth quarter, I'm seeing at least 12 wins. And when you look at that overall, that puts you right in the division and the conference hunt. Because again, the West is playing the East. The Steelers have really missed the major load of non-AFC North juggernauts. I mean, if you take out the AFC North, we play the Niners in week one, which is the best time to play the Niners, and Jacksonville. No disrespect to Jacksonville, but compared to the other hitters in this conference, the Jets, Buffalo, Miami, San Diego, Chargers, Jacksonville's below all of them. So we're not playing the elites of the elites, which as long as you take care of your business in the other games, you're going to be right there in a spot to have this conference. I do believe that this is a 12-win team. Obviously, key thing, and this might be the first year this is true, TJ is not the most important injury. He is a very important injury that we don't want to have. But if Kenny goes out to say two-win team, um, Mitch Trubisky cannot win you a football game. So I, I am thoroughly convinced that we're back to the era, and this is one of the great things you know that you have with a potential franchise quarterback. If he goes out, you're done. That's where we're at with Kenny. Kenny is going to lead this team to some greatness. So Steelers Nation, I'm immensely proud of this team. I think it's going to be amazing. Leave me your comments about what it is you think the Steelers are going to be doing this year. I think the sky's the limit for them. And then once you're in the playoffs, you get a defense who's sacking people like crazy and a quarterback who's putting the ball accurately. Much rather have the Chiefs come in here than go in Arrowhead, but that will be a fight.